morning. Joining me now, House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence Chairman Mike Turner. He's a Republican of Ohio, serving his state's 10th congressional district. You can follow him on Twitter at Rep Mike Turner. Mr. Chairman, welcome back. Good morning. Good, sorry. Good afternoon, Julie. How are you doing? Thanks for having I'm, me. I'm very well. Thank you. So um, interesting moves by China at this time when relations between the two countries are are seriously strained. What do you make of it? The latest? Well, I, I think you're going to see a, a number of, of steps by, by China uh, that, uh, one, are a reflection of the fact that when they look to Russia, uh, they're very concerned as to their own stability and as to you know their long-term plans for you know, consolidating the, their power uh, and incorporating Taiwan. And having seen what Russia uh, has how they have failed with Ukraine, but also how the world has rallied uh, to support Ukraine as a democracy, um, I think is very troubling to them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also being and having a number of, uh, of areas where uh, their covert operations are now being exposed, where we're seeing the police stations, the spy balloons, the um, you know, the expansion of their surveillance society into South and, and Central America that, that might have an impact on the United States. The fact that they cannot operate in, in covertly, uh, it also brings, you know, shines a light on uh, what their operations are, what their threats are. And I think that gives greater results to the United States. And Mr. Chairman, also uh, a, a continued worry is the sad state of China's economy, which uh, we know when leaders get desperate and are in bad economic straits, they tend to make bad decisions. Right. Uh, you know, all analysts who have looked at uh, China's economy they see significant vulnerability, uh, significant amounts of, of debt, uh, concerns of the um, uh, impacts on the workforce, uh, but projections of joblessness, all of that trends negatively. But at the same time, when you look at uh, their dependence, we, we sometimes are, speak of the concern of the, you know, them being in the supply chain for the United States and for the West and, and our dependence, but their dependence on cash from the West uh, really shows that a decoupling is not possible for, mm-hmm. for China and certainly you know, any destabilizing in their relationship uh, with, the, um, with the West and, and economics would be devastating to their economy. What's your assessment of the effects of Blinken's recent trip to Beijing? Well, I, you know, it certainly does bolster, I think, uh, China's perception of itself. You know, you always hate to see the United States um, in, in any official capacity, um, you know, subjugating itself to you know, an authoritarian regime. And I think in, in this instance, there are certainly a number of symbolisms uh, that came out of that uh, that are problematic for, for, the, uh, for the relationship where it, it looks like, you know, work were courting China instead of actually looking at um, their threats and their issues and and you know addressing them with resolve. It's been uh, disturbing to see that the president of Taiwan is is having is suffering some very low approval numbers, um, and uh, that country seems to be not in great shape at the moment. Well, I, I think um, you know any country that's going to have the um, up- Amount of pressure that they're currently have having is is certainly going to go through um, you know, stress and, and and turmoil. But at the same time, I think uh, we're we're getting it's still uh, very strong uh, democratic uh, foundations uh, in Taiwan that that really does respond. I think to when people look at the the uh, China's uh, overall you know architecture to to incorporate Taiwan and to to end democracy there with their authoritarian regime. As, as very moving to, to people. Um, and uh, I think China would, would definitely see this as, a, as a, an unexpected misstep uh, mm-hmm. if they took action against Taiwan. But, but do you believe that's still a, a part of their overall plan for the next what? What was, their, what was the time frame? I forget the year, but yes, in the next yeah. several years. Well, yeah, right. Uh, President Xi has made this statement openly. He's gone as far as to say um, that um, they, they are, are willing to do it by force. And he's openly stated to his country that they should prepare for war. Mm-hmm. Um, th- those, are, those are statements that you don't normally receive from a, a leader of a country to, to inform their populace that, that war is imminent. But it, more than that, I think it informs us and it informs you know, certainly the West uh, that, that that's what China is preparing for. And and moving back to Russia, if you will, um, and and you had mentioned that that China was taking a lesson from from the world reaction to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And what's your assessment of where Putin stands now after this latest event this past weekend? 
Well, he's definitely weakened, and it, we'll have to wait to see what the fallout is. He's, you know, at this point, there's the reports of him attempting to consolidate um, his his uh, power in the military. Clearly, there were elements of the military that were supportive of the Pergozin, um, uh, you know, uprising or whatever, you know, insurgency, however you want to call it. Uh, but you know, anybody who who amasses a military and makes it on a 12-hour journey, 10 hours uh, into uh, to Moscow. Uh, had help. And um, I think uh, Putin now sees his own military uh, as uh, as a threat to him and to his regime. And we'll have to see uh, how, how that unfolds. But it's definitely weakened Putin. And I think it certainly has weakened his case for rallying um, the Russian military and the Russian people for the um, aggressive uh, war that they're fighting in, in Ukraine. Since Prigozhin, before he took this march, um, where he took his convoys up up toward Moscow, uh, stated that the very premise of the Ukraine war was a lie. Yeah, and we see Putin today doing uh, I don't know public appearances, g- going into crowds, shaking hands, posing for selfies, uh, trying to reassure the people. You know, I think it's going to be very hard for the, the, any for you know the Russian populace to get out of their mind the picture of um, you know the. Putin coming on their television sets and, and groveling and requesting that the Prigozhin stop and that the militia stop on their way to uh, to Moscow and at the same time, uh, you know, canceling all events, telling people to hold up into their homes and beginning to barricade Moscow itself. Those those visuals um, and the experience of of that concern that that both Putin exhibited and that he transferred to the Russian people in in Moscow uh, is not going to be shaken likely. My guest, Chairman Mike Turner, it leads the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. You can find him on Twitter at Rep. Mike Turner. Uh, Congressman, moving to North Korea, they've been having some strange rallies lately, promising to annihilate the U.S. What do you think is going on there? Well, um, you know, but it's been very troubling to watch uh, their missile development, their nuclear weapons development, uh, their attempts to uh, perfect missile technology that can reach the United States. And just about everybody assesses uh, publicly at this point that North Korea um, does maintain uh, missile technology, nuclear weapons technology that could reach the United States. Um, that That is a, a, a real threat. Uh, and I think uh, certainly uh, the um, in North Korea doesn't believe that they're getting the attention from the United States uh, from having accomplished that. Now, obviously, we, we understand that one, um, that the even before they, they launch a missile, before it comes to the United States, we're going to be taking actions against them uh, that uh, you know, certainly our force and power would be to prevent them from doing so. Um, the, um, and, and certainly this, this rogue regime that is just so brutal to its own people um, is, is looking for the attention of the, of the United States, and, and rightly so. We should, we should see them as a threat. Uh, but uh, I, I think these, these rallies are, are for trying to grab our attention. Mm-hmm. Well, for sure, they're, I'm sure they're rattled. The U.S. sending its largest nuclear armed submarine to hang out in South Korea for a while. That would be that would be unnerving. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, and, and so many people forget that we used to have nuclear weapons in South Korea. Um, and so there, there's always the option uh, to, you know, land base again in response to uh, North Korea's um, development of a nuclear weapon and its um, uh, missile technology threatening the United, mainland United States. I really appreciate your time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. Take, Take care. care.